So this one will probably come way out of left field for some people, but I decided that I wanted to play The Suffering next, just because it has a huge nostalgia for me. Uh, I actually first played it back whenever I was a lot younger with friends on a stormy night, one random night on the original Xbox. And it was certainly, it, it certainly stuck with me for quite a while. And I ended up trying to play it again later after the fact, but it actually crashed at the very end of the game on me. And it doesn't have a autosave system. It does have a very intricate and good saving system, but it does not have autosaves. And I lost about five to six hours of gameplay, and right at the final boss, I didn't get to beat it. So, that kind of sucked. Uh, another thing of note while we are playing, though, I am using a mod for fixing a lot of the issues with the PC version on this game. It, I'll have a thing for that down in the description. As well as, I used a remapper for uh, PC controls to controller controls. This game doesn't really have a uh, built-in controller scheme, even though it was on original consoles for Xbox, PlayStation. But it doesn't have a mapping for it on the PC version. So I'll also put that down below. I'm not affiliated with either of the things that I used. Uh, I just happen to use them to make the game better. So I can't really speak out about them. I did enjoy using the mod to make the cutscenes HD and all of that. But the remapper was also pretty nice, customizable, all of that. Again, not affiliated, not sponsored, just telling what I used to make the game a little bit better if somebody wants to play it. But other than the technical details, we do have the intro cutscene that we have here. And there are a lot of explicatives, so you'll definitely have to be prepared for that. As well as I've forgotten to set cut or forgot to set subtitles in the beginning, so... We won't have subtitles for the first cutscene, but at the same time, it, it'll be on in the next four or five minutes. So after this cutscene, it'll be a lot easier to catch what everyone's saying. So basic premise is we're a death row convict ended up in a place called Carnate Prison. Our boy here, Torque, which we play as, was convicted of killing his wife and kids, and now he's on death row. The island is supernatural in nature, along with the prison, and you kind of learn about everything as you go. Uh, the first monsters we have here are actually called Slayers. They're kind of odd. They have, like distended heads with no necks. So, the monsters are actually kind of unique in the fact back in when where you could shoot their head and it would not hey, kill them. Back in your cell. Everything's under control. This game is kind of like a pseudo dead space in a way. Because you can actually take out enemies and make them bleed out by shooting off limbs. So we get our first shiv. We saw the monster that freed us from the cage. That'll be explained more as we get to the basement later. But... There is... Uh, you'll see the PC controls and everything coming up. I had to remap every single button onto a controller for this to work. So my enter key was my X key. Alt I didn't give a purpose because it would actually break the game window whenever I was trying to do it. So yeah, a lot of the remapping was kind of janky and 
I had to do it playing really weird controls. And my grenade key actually broke for the first half of the game, so I couldn't throw grenades until I adjusted and refixed that. So eventually I will start throwing grenades, but in the beginning I don't really use them at all. And if you need to know why, that is why. But this game also has a morality system. Uh, we can get three different kinds of endings, a good, a bad, and a neutral. But I will be going for the good ending. Uh, most any time I play a game, I usually play the good ending, just because uh, I may be alone in it, but it makes me feel like shit if I play bad endings. So I will be going for good boy torque. Which there's, it's never really heavily explained what gives good and bad actions. You'll see the results after you do the action. In the case that your wife appears or other stuff happens, you'll get a quick flash on the screen and it'll say, I can't believe you've done this or something else along the lines. And yeah, playing into the supernatural elements of the suffering, we will get phone calls and stuff that don't really make a whole lot of sense. So it kind of all comes together slowly as we go. You'll get bits and pieces about Carnate and all of the stuff that happened here, like all of the atrocities, stuff like that. The monsters and stuff are never really explained themselves, but at the same time, you do see how this place is just like pure evil. And our boy Torque, if you want to believe whatever you want to believe, uh, there's a bunch of different debates and stuff on the game. Some people say that Torque is the person that breaks the camel's back, that whenever he comes here because of his past, that it happens to send Carnate into overdrive and causes the events of the game. But you can also find like labs and stuff later on where the slayers are down below like they've always existed. They just happen to break out. And then there's also stuff from like ancient times, or not ancient times, the 1600s, I guess, ancient. But there's old timey monsters and stuff as well. So it seems like Carnate always had a dark side, but it's never really fully explained on how that dark side happens. So here we actually have our first fightable enemy, which is a Slayer. Uh, you'll notice eventually whenever I do get guns and stuff that the aim is rather bad. The controller support isn't exactly the best for PC, so there is no auto aim. But to make up for that, after the first fight I adjusted by... Since the aim itself for moving the controller's right stick isn't good, I actually adjusted by just using Torque's movement. So I would adjust the elevation of my shots and then just move Torque in a way that would make it where the aim actually worked. So just kind of a adaption. And here we have a case of a paranormal kind of event. You see your son in a stall, and then you get surrounded by slayers. There's a bunch of stuff like that to mess with your head. There's also this ever-omnipresent breathing going on in the background. Just to kind of add to the tension. I wouldn't really call this game a horror game, per se. It does have horror elements, like the slayers and stuff are supposed to be 
kind of spooky and it does have some jump scare kind of elements but it definitely leans heavily into action combat all right you got a light we gotta head downstairs to get out of this shithole and you better stay out of my way if i need to shoot more of those fuckers i will but this guy is actually a morality me. decision uh if you end up just shanking him then you do get bad morality so there are decisions like this throughout the game. Like whenever we first meet him, the voices in your head will say, why don't you help him along, or you should kill him, he's useless. Whenever you get stuff like that, it'll be kind of an obvious moral choice, but there are other moral choices that aren't as obvious. So it's just kind of like gauging how you are as a person. Sometimes hidden in the background, sometimes subtly. One fucked up who's gal. And let me tell you, we better stay away from the fucking basement. If things are bad up here, down there, it's gonna be like the mouth of hell. I always saw the good in you. So there we can see we made a good moral choice. Because the wife pops up and says something positive. If she said something negative, then that would mean that we messed up. Or somebody will reprimand you or tell you a good job for doing what you did. Like, evilly. That sort of stuff. So, if anybody is curious, I actually played this on a PlayStation 4 controller with the remapping. Uh, I essentially bound the scroll wheel to the pad on the front of the controller, where I right and left tap the pad would scroll my weapons back and forth and then my grenades and throwables i would use right and left on the d-pad but everything else was kind of base where i would have throwables be l2 firing was r2 But yeah, there are little intricate details in the background of this story. Like Willie there, a death row inmate who was obviously about to be put to death, calling his mom for the last time. There's a bunch of little stuff just littered around the place like that. And I am sad to say that I did miss a particular jump scare with Horace. Or not really a jump scare, but just a s suspenseful moment where you're on the monitor and he's just slowly approaching you as you're on the monitor watching yourself. And you can hear the crackling as he gets closer and closer. I'd meant to actually get that scene, but I did miss it. But if anybody is curious, that's probably one of my more favorite uh, spook moments. But here we just have to go towards the door, and then the Slayer decides doors are for chumps. But you'll see my aim is absolutely terrible in the beginning. Because at this point, I had tested a little bit of the aiming, and was messing around with the sensitivity. But it... It's still jerky. Like, the acceleration and deceleration on the stick was just terrible no matter how much I tried to hone it in. So eventually, I came to the conclusion that Torque's movement is actually super smooth compared to the, the uh, actual looking. So that's why I started just using Torque to compensate for the fact that the aim itself was terrible. Which did actually come pretty close to making the game really good at aiming. It was just that minor adjustment that was needed, and then it basically was super easy to play from that point on. So you'll see I just kind of leave the aim in a place, and then move torque instead. And the sensitivity was put down quite a bit just because of the janky jerkiness, so it does take me a while to turn around. 
But if I put it any higher, then it was basically uncontrollable in how jerky it would be. So, he does turn slow. So, if you do notice that, and it does upset you, I'm sorry, but... This was basically the way that I could make the game playable with a controller. The mouse controls aren't too bad. In fact, the keyboard controls aren't bad at all. It's just I'm used to this game on a controller, so... That was why I opted to go through all the trouble. Hey, can anybody hear me? You've got to let me in! They're all dead out here! I lost my keys! Open the door! Please! Is anybody in there? They're everywhere! But there you can actually see an example of Torque's idle poses. Uh, if you stick around for a little bit, he'll pull a picture out of his pocket or start flourishing his weapons and stuff. So it is kind of interesting. Here's actually another moral decision. As you can see, the voices in our head are telling us to just murder this guy. So you can see the giant yellow glowing button. They want us to push it to gas him, but since we're going for the good ending, we're not going to push it. So in case you're curious, it's a moral decision kind of like that. Murphy, was this your idea? Hawk? Which one of you fuckers thought of this? Uh, maybe a new jack, but you think I was born yesterday? I'm not sure. But we keep seeing this creature going around and it blurs the screen. Uh, that gets explained a bit more later. But there are multiple paths that we can look around and do stuff at. So it does encourage exploration to gain items and advantages from it. This thing working? So if you just want to go around places, you can. Hello. Hawks again. Still trying to find us. The pill bottles and stuff, that's our healing. Uh, zombium. You actually get quite a bit. If you have the full amount of nine bottles, uh, I think it's close to, like, three health bars worth of healing. Which you can take a lot of damage pretty quickly, depending. Uh, explosives especially will absolutely shred your health bar. You don't really need to worry about enemies causing explosions too much. It's usually self-inflicted with that. I think the only thing that can really do an explosion is a marksman, but we don't see them for a little bit. But we will work our way towards the gas chamber. And as you can see, uh, sometimes you'll actually pop off limbs and stuff. But you can actually pop off the heads of enemies and they won't die. If you pop off a limb, they'll actually start doing a bleed out. And there's our first seeing of Hermes, but... If you shoot off a limb of an enemy, they will actually start to bleed out. And over time, they will just die. But this is actually a result of our not gassing this guy ourselves. So Hermes ended up getting rid of him. But now we just wait for the Slayer over here. He'll uh, break through the glass for us. Which, this is actually a bigger variety of Slayer. Uh, I don't really know much in particular about the big Slayers. But it seems like they have more health. I don't know if they do more damage or anything. I can't really say for certain there. But they definitely seem to take more abuse.
but we'll get more and more enemies as we go. For now, we just have the enhanced slayers. But we're going to be heading down into the basement, which that'll take us into the next part. They won't leave you alone until you. And we'll get it. to see Doctor Killjoy, Hermes, and Horus, and they'll show us about insanity and all of that, which is an interesting mechanic. So we'll get on to that in the next part. But until then, uh, let me know what you guys think, and have a good one.